Good evening, everybody. Hello and welcome, welcome. Welcome to Web Class Wednesday Live. If uh, anybody's listening to the recording, because we are now uploading those and sending those out, welcome to Web Class Wednesday Replay. So I want to welcome you all here, everybody who's in the house. I've just got everybody on mute for the moment. Um, I'm going to bring Michael on, and then we'll, um, I'll see a few words about Michael. He'll see a few words about Michael. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, his author journey, how he went from there to here, and everything in between and what's to come. I have a few questions, and then you guys will have um, plenty of opportunity to ask questions yourself. So. Um, welcome, Michael Challenger. I'm going to unmute you. Hey, guys. So say hello to Michael. Michael, how are you doing? How's um, Toronto today, tonight? Tonight, Toronto is very wet and cold. So I don't know how it is for you guys, wherever you are, but it is, um, it's a wet night. Yeah. I'm listening to the tick, tick, tick of freezing rain on my windshield, uh, on my window right now. <laughs> so we're getting a little bit of mixed bag. We're getting a little bit of everything in Montreal. So we have people here from Montreal. We've got from uh, Waterloo. We have out in Laval. We've got Chatham. Uh, where else do we have? Uh, where are you, Natalie? You're in Guelph? No. I'm in Melanchthon, which is about an hour and a half away from Toronto. Yeah. Okay. He's close to me. Yes. Yes, you're closer to him <laughs> than we are. Okay, so um, I want to introduce you to somebody who I'm so proud of, um, mm -hmm. client of mine, friend and uh, amazing uh, success story, uh, Michael Challenger's story. Uh, I'm just going to read a couple of words. I had put it in the email today, but I do want to read it because I can't remember all this. <laughs> so here we go. Award-winning producer, director, choreographer, entrepreneur, Michael Challenger. He's the best-selling author of Don't Let Fear Paralyze You, A Guide to Your Own Personal Freedom. There he is. His career as a producer, director, singer, dancer, choreographer led him to believe he was at the top of his game. This idea came crashing to a halt by incidents he witnessed during the four years he spent in LA. This was a time fraught with negativity from all avenues and directions. Sound familiar? It literally paralyzed him until he realized he could control the situation and in acknowledging that fact, was able to analyze the process and ultimately he created solutions that can be utilized by anyone. Montreal born and world traveled Michael Challenger is now in a position to challenge you to overcome your fear and live the best life possible. So Michael joins us and he's gonna share more about his author journey, his um, monumental success, because that's the truth of his businesses beyond his book, and how writing this book was the catalyst that powered up every area of his life. In December 2018, he released uh, his family film, Where Do We Go From Here? And his passion for his optimal living groundbreaking business brand. So, welcome, Michael. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Carolyn Flower. Awesome. It's, it's, uh, we've been talking about this for a little while and I'm excited to speak to everybody because it's, um, it's been an interesting journey, guys. And I, uh, yeah. I look forward to speaking to everybody a little bit later for, with uh, any, you know, any questions. But um, Carolyn and I had an opportunity to really sit down and get to it. Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I have a few questions for you. And, um, and I think it kind of gives a, uh, you know, an overview of uh, a few of the avenues that you had to travel uh, along this part of your journey. So you and I met back in um, November 2016. Right. <laughs> and you published uh, a year later, right? In October, uh, not even. Yeah, a year, not even a year, October 2017. 
Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yes. So um, one of the things I usually like to ask authors who have published and have made their way. Um, so take us back to when you made the decision that like this book idea was, was a happening thing. You were going to do that. Like what, what was that like at that time? I think that, you know, it was interesting because I had, sorry, once again, hi everybody. And thank you so much for joining. Cause it's, uh, it's, I, 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 I'm so excited to hear about where you guys are. And if you even, if you're currently writing a book or you're just, you know, curious about what this feels like. But but when I when I came up with the idea, I the voices started right. The voices mm -hmm. of can I actually get this done? Um, you know, I didn't really share it with a lot of people because I you know when you do any type of self help, you know, one of the recommendations is always to just write down your feelings. Right? It's therapeutic. Get get you know start the process of breaking through whatever it is that you're working on in your life. So that's what I did, and I started to just focus on my life and let it go, and get to a place where I can actually be confident and okay with myself. But as I was doing that, when I went because I was in film school in Los Angeles, you know, one of my teachers told me, you know, he said, "You're a good writer." Like you, you're writing pretty good scripts. And I think that you should really invest on becoming more of a serious writer. And so I thought, I don't know, you know, like directing was my thing and I, I wasn't, but because writing wasn't my outlet. So when I took it to the, you know, to another platform, I realized that there was something that I had to say to readers, to people, right? And it was so, it was a discovery that came along the way. And as I kept doing it and as I kept writing, I, I realized that it was a part of my mission as, as, as an artist, as a, as a human being, right? I just, right. I had to, you know, I, I, I had to say something. And, and so what that was in the moment, I didn't know, but then it ended up becoming about. Um, well, we don't know often in the moment, do we? We just, we, we know we have an idea. We know that we know that we know that it has to be done. We don't have to know the how. That's, that's the common denominator in all creation. you got to know where you're going, but you don't have to know how you're going to get there. You just have to know where you're headed. So mm -hmm. you knew that. So when you had a film um, teacher suggest writing, you know, script writing was great, writing talent, whatnot. Did you get that little voice inside the city? Yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm a performer. I'm, uh, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a director. I'm used to producing. Yeah, writing. I don't know. Like, yeah. did you get that voice of the self-doubt of, uh, like, a, a book? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really, it came, the, the doubt came in with, with imagining what my peers would think about me. Right. Like, like imagining what, when I would post something on social media that, like, what? Michael Challenger has a book about what? Right? Right. And so I literally, I came to that place. You know, I, I had to do the work just around that, right? I literally had to do, I had to stop and just get over the sweats. I'm not joking. Like day after day, had to just get quiet and, and be okay with, it's okay. Whether yeah. or not people accept the book or not, this is about my journey, right? right. And so that self-talk, I, I had to get to that place. And so there's work just in that. Right. And once you get to that place and once you realize that um, it really is a gift for your own life. Yeah. And, and it's, a, it's a gift when you can really just respect the journey with where you're at and use it as a tool for the people who are willing to be a part of your journey. Then great. If not, that's OK, too. I won't, yeah. I won't go too far. So you had the opportunity to think about it, to go through that fear of judgment. But what I found really interesting about you deciding to write a book is about this particular subject. So here, here we're talking about, um, you know, on the back cover, the first paragraph of your back cover, have you ever felt weakened by fear? Do you sometimes feel misunderstood and wonder what steps you could take to meet life's challenges head on and regain control of your life? Like here you are a guy that's accomplished quite a bit 
And so you've got like this image, right? The self-image on the outside versus the self-image on the inside. And that self-image on the outside is that people are thinking like often people who are successful, people that go, it's like a breeze, like what, Michael has fear? Yeah, Carolyn, Carolyn would always say that's because, you know, there was, you know, yeah, you know, I, I, I did a lot of stuff, right? I mean, I was a part of many projects and you're right, Carolyn, it's, you identify with your, you know, the surface persona, right? And yeah. so I think we all know what that persona is when we're going to work, we got to put on our face and we got to keep moving, right? So nobody's really interested in really hearing about what's really going on. Um, but I, I, but specifically as a performer and specifically as a person who's had to lead to expose that. Yes. That's what, what I mean. It's exposing that piece. It, it's the vulnerability part to me. That is the biggest challenge of all. That's where that real fear yeah. comes in because we all want to hide that part. So it takes courage to actually write about your own vulnerability. Yeah, and it was, and it was the, in the vulnerability, so here, here's the beauty about this, guys, and that's the thing, and I think we all, when you take on the challenge to actually be vulnerable, the, the, the strength that you find in the vulnerability is incredible. Yeah. Right? That's really what it came down to, and, and the only way that I could actually really express that is because I went through it. I took the, I took the challenge. And I decided to actually experience what that vulnerability was going to feel like, whether it was good or bad. Yeah. Right. Because I, I didn't, I didn't know. Right. And I'm also talking about something that's quite invasive. You know, when, when you're talking about fear, people either light up or they run away. Yeah, exactly. Right. When, when, when you talk about fear, it's like, well, I don't, First of all, I don't know who you are. I don't want to talk about that. There's not really an invitation for that. But then when we actually look at it, I think the book in itself, because, and, and you know, I think Carolyn will talk about that, but you know, the interactiveness in the book allows yeah. you to really examine where you are and where you need to go. And that's really what the point was. It, was the, it wasn't just about me talking at the readers. It was really about when you read it, how can you actually successfully get to where you want to be? Yeah, so it's an interactive experience, and and for a lot of um, for a lot of uh, aspiring authors who are writing in the nonfiction genre, right? They're writing about their expertise, they're writing about what they already know, but they're also it's also an invitation for your reader to participate actively in your book. Yes. So what we did in your book, and we've done it a number of times, is we include pages for you know self reflection, or in your case, we put specific questions into that book yeah. that asks readers to then self-reflect after you taught one specific part and then they had to go and answer some questions so that they're actually you're putting them at ease it's not like I'm talking I'm talking at you book this is like this is us you and me together yeah, we're working great. through this stuff that's not so fun to work through you and me together so I think I liked that a lot about the book that we decided to co-create all together because, and at the beginning of your book, you had asked people to, you know, continuously through your manuscript at one point you had at the beginning said, you know, every time I write this, I want you to take a breath, remember? And we came up with the little Buddha, right? So you were asking people to kind of take a breath and reflect. And then we ended up just using it by imagery and inserting that little Buddha image throughout the book so that people felt like they had permission to just kind of take it all in and breathe. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the interactiveness of the book suggests that you're not alone, right? Yeah. And, that, and, I, and that's what I really wanted as a, as, a, as a writer. I wanted to remind the reader that I'm, I'm actually your friend, friend, whether you, I know you or not. Yeah. Right? I, I'm actually a friend by your side because I know what it's like to feel paralyzed i know what it's like to experience the fear when you're like i don't know where to go i don't know how to deal with this and nobody really gets me right now yeah so so it's so that part of it was very interesting for me to even just experiment what that would be like and then you know again when you hear from the readers when they actually do the the exercise some of them haven't done them and i'm always like but you gotta do the exercise but 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 the ones who ch choose to do the exercise 
Yeah. But it's incredible what they say to me when they, when they're done. Right. So, that, so did you intuitively have any real sense of how, how powerful this book was actually going to be? Zero. No, not at all. Not at all. I, I don't think you did because I know that when, when we, when we did your first book signing, which happened to be in Montreal at, at chapters Indigo in Point Claire. And, um, I walked in there just, looking for you because I know where the table is because I put authors in there and you're not there. And they yeah. said, I'm sorry, we had to move him because all the people that were coming to his book signing were blocking the door. <laughs> right. You had so many people there. And I remember saying to you, I told you the book takes on a life of its own. Yeah. And, and that, yeah. And that was really cool because, you know, it's the same thing when you create a film or any piece that's not, you know, because I've always, when I first started, I was the performer, right? So your performances are attached to your body. Like, you know what's going on when you're getting the response, when you're getting the you yes. know, accolades, it, it comes directly back to you. But yes. then but whatever, whatever piece of art that you're creating and you release it, it's out of your control. Yes. So, when, so when you're witnessing your baby, literally being kind of displayed out there and people are lining up, um, critiquing it, you know, sharing their comments about what they feel. It's, it's, it's such an, it's an incredible experience. And, you know, you have to be ready for whatever comes your way, because at that point, you're no longer in control of your piece. Once you, you know, you work with the editor, once you work with Carolyn, once you work with the team, then you really just have to stand by what you are, what you've created. And that's empowering in itself because there's always going to be a mistake. There's always going to be a comma that's missing. I mean, there's always going to be something that people can come back and say, you know, like, oh, I'm page 42, right? And you're like, you, you. got to let that, you got to let that go. You know, you're like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, there, but at that point, I'm like, well, it's already done, guys. And I'm not, I'm not going back. You know, I, I, I mean, at that point, I, I mean, you can go back and you can go back to the you know publishing house and do your corrections, but really, really. Well, know, it should be out by the time it's out. It should be in its finest form. But I mean, yeah, there's yeah. there's no question. I you know we read books all the time and we see things and they've gone through so many sets of eyes. Yeah. yeah. But at that point, it's like you know, there people that are reading it are hyper vigilant. If they're going to see a comma out of place, they want to tell you. Yeah, yeah, and 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 to be honest with you, I'm just even. Um, humble that they're reading it. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've had to, I have to, I've had to even come to that place of like, you know, again, whatever critique, and we, we've heard of whether it's negative or, or positive, it's, it's a good thing because people actually care. So, yeah. so you know, it's, it's that experience that I think that every author actually has to go through in order to, you know, think about their second book, think about, you know, what, what they're, what they're, what they really want to do because. This question, even just the the idea of did I know all I all I could really say or what I was sure about was my intention. Yes, I knew what my intention was when I was writing it. I knew what my mission was, and if I was okay, being okay with that, mm. open up this, you know, whatever came my way, right? And at that point. You, you're, you're, you're just, you sit with it and you're okay with it. So that was how, that's how I kind of came to peace with anything that happened, you know? So, so tell me something and, and anybody who's writing a book looks forward to, there's a few, uh, you know, pivotal moments in the process of writing a book, right? The first time the manuscript is done, done. Like sometimes it's done, but it's not quite done. Yeah. But when it's really done and it's gone through the edits and it finally goes into design. So that's kind of one part. And then your book gets designed on the inside and it looks like a book book, right? Where you see it in the proper fonts for the first time and you see, you get to look at that and what it looks like. Like, but one of the really big moments is the unboxing, right? When you see your mm. book. So when this book came to you in a, in a big box with your face <laughs> and your name at the bottom, yeah. how'd that feel? It was, well, here's the thing. It was really cool because when I was, you know, um, Carolyn and I were talking about it and Carolyn was like, well, just, just wait, just like, just wait until you get your book in your hands. Like she just get, and I was like, you know, and of course it's the image, right? Like you can visualize and you think, okay, like, well, you know, it's going to be great. And, but then when it actually happens, it's an outer body experience, right? 
open up your, you open up the box and you're like, is this, is this my book? Like, is this my book? And then flipping through it, then it's like, ah, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's unbelievable. It really, really is. But you, you know, you feel everything, right? Like you're like, but it's my book. So now, 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 now is, uh, this is, this is it, you know, and, and it's time to really share with the world. It's really, it's time to share with, with the people. So I, I, um, I, I, I think I, what did, I'm trying to remember. I, I came in, I sat down, I got really quiet and I just thought to myself, like it, there was, it was a wave of emotions, a mm -hmm. wave, right? It was so, because it's all those years, because of course, as we know, for many people, it never happens. Right. Right? It it's a huge accomplishment. I mean, you know, when you think about it and dream about it and talk about it and imagine it, um, it's in the distance, it's in the future. And then when you start doing it, you take action, you're, you're in the production of it, and then it actually gets produced. You forget how much of a big deal yeah. it is. And you, and you see that reflected back at you when people then start reading your book and going, wow. It is, it's quite an accomplishment because most people only talk about it and wish it and think about it. But taking the, the leap, the quantum leap, really, to take the action it takes to get through the, what, what I call the author odyssey, because that's the change and the growth and the transformation that happens to the writer through that process, because you're different at the end than you were at the beginning. 100%. Right. So to undertake and to say yes to that challenge and to do it, it's that whole intuitive process that takes you through to the goal achieved. So I never want people to lose sight of, you know, if we do it by, by visioneering or, or imagining or doing a life script or however we do it to get you to feel what the wish feels like fulfilled. It's a really powerful moment when you actually get that thing done you know it's like it could be a year of your life that you've been talking about it could be 10 years of your life you've been talking about but most people don't actually do it so that's a really really big thing so so you published your book and then you were doing book signings i know you were doing like uh you were um organizing quite a number of things in toronto and whatnot um so how did the book kind of leverage and work into the rest of your projects because tell us a little bit about your production company which is really was like the mainstay of a lot of your business and then things evolved you had the book come out and you were producing the film and all these different things but tell us a little bit about the moving parts that are happening yeah so it was a you know the so I so basically a little bit about what I do is that I have an umbrella uh, production company that takes care of video production um, I also take a, a managed talent and then there's also the events side of things, right? So there's about three divisions that are in, in the company. And so while I was doing that, you know, it was, um, of course, the juggling act that we all go through. But when I, you know, when the book was published and I actually had it in my hand, it became a really amazing conversation piece. It became something that was a part of my life. And so when people find that out about you, um, it's an extension of who you are. And then when I would say the title, then when I would say, don't let fear paralyze you, it'd be like, oh, like, wow, that's an interesting, that's an interesting title. That's something that, you know, I think it, it resonates with so many people on so many levels, right? Because we all have that false expectation that appears real in our minds, right? We all have that kind of, you know, that we are, we're all working on wherever it is, depending on where we are in our life. So, so it, in itself, I was, I, I, uh, it became, first of all, this title, you know, it became a best-selling book. And so that was really awesome to be a best-selling author. So it was um, another thing that I could, you know, add to my, to my career. And, yeah. and, then, and then it was the, you know, my creative self from the publishing. I, I decided that I'm really passionate about not only encouraging people, but bringing different ideas to people on, on, on many platforms. And so I created, so it, it ended up going into a health summit called Optimal Living that I produced last year. So right. it, was, it was a wonderful thing because I had, I had um, the events, you know, I had the experience of working in the, in the, in the world of events, but then I, I realized 
not only do I want to speak about this, but I actually want to now really um, cultivate, create um, new relationships with people that are like-minded and to support them in their journeys. Yeah, because the whole fear, plan, like when you created Optimal Living and you had the summit last October in Toronto, I mean, that was your first live event. And you, I mean, you just like, you know, got the yeah. idea, going to yeah. do it, off we go, create it, yeah. and here it is. So you took the action and did all of those things toward it. Didn't really know how it was all going to come together till it does, right? Right, right. I mean, I had, I had zero idea. I have never, you know, I'd never produced a health summit like that before. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't outside of my reach in terms of, like, you know, doing the planning behind it. But in terms of the subject matter and actually taking that brand to the people was very, very new to me. So, um, and, and when I, and I did it quick, right? I, I, yeah. I mean, I made a decision, literally, right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing too. When you write a book like this, and you know that's talking about don't let fear paralyze you. Trust me, it's always in the back of my mind, right? It's always something that I'm always reminding myself that what I stand by, where I'm at in my life now, and that because the thing is, guys, we're always going to experience fear, yeah. right? And it's part of the journey. So you know when you, but when you reach to another level of fear and you actually expand your life to. To, to really find out, okay, this is this, I didn't even know this, this, this type of, you know, experience exists. And now I have to face it, you know, that it's like now working through that. And so when I decided to bring this summit to the people, once again, paved a new path and then received, you know, incredible responses. Saw yeah. that it was life changing. So, you know, all of it was, it's, it's all connected. The root of what I'm always talking about is fear and that it's, it's interjected into the, you know, to the projects that I do. And that's who I am, right? That's, that, that is who I am. And so there's no, I don't have to, there's no performance here. This is really what I actually, this is, this is the authentic, the, the authenticity part of who I am. And I think that that is what all authors or writers should really, I think, seek. Is that if you are going to... A thousand percent. I think that's a really, really good point because we're all writing from that part of ourselves. Like for me, you know, if I, I can get on a subject uh, about gratitude and talk about it because it isn't something I learned, it's something I live. So when it's when your subject matter, and I know that, you know, everybody on this call really has that same experience. They're writing about something that they've experienced. They're writing about their own their own first person accounting of whether it's, you know, a, a personal event or circumstances or expertise, or they, you know, been part of a, a certain style of life and they're writing about that, but everyone's bringing a part of them to their readers. So you can't, you can't perform that. It's who you are. And I think that's where um, that's the most important piece because if readers don't, they won't feel that if it's not there. You exactly. can't fake that. Exactly. exactly. So that's what you're seeking. You want the connection. That's what story is about. My story, when I share it with you and then another thousand people, it's how can my story impact the life of another? That's why we tell our story. Because we want to take, we, we're all in service to other people so if my story and my experience and my adversity and how i overcame certain things if i can help one other person for most of us that's enough now that's not where it's ever going to stop because it all ripples from there and then what i try to teach too is like the book the book isn't the end of the, of the road the book is the beginning so then the book takes on a life of its own. Literally, it creates a, like you, a speaking platform. So when you came up with Optimal Living and I, I saw your, you know, you had your bio there and everything. Fear is a wellness. I mean, you're teaching about wellness just by teaching people how to uh, overcome and strategies about dealing with stress, wellness, dis-ease, and overcoming fear. So anybody who's writing a book, anybody who's on this call, you're all in the same exact place. You're digging in and you're writing about something that's really important to you. And then like Michael, when you just allow that to flow, 
like you have no idea what's coming. That's what's so exciting, right? Yeah, you have you have you have no idea, and it's and it's uh, it's exhilarating because you did it. I think it's I think that when you can come back and really you know and reflect in retrospect what just happened, because there are times that I forget, right? I go to my bookshelf and I'm like, and I look for books and I'm like, oh, my, and there's my book. Yeah, okay. You know, it, it, it's, it's like a, it's this constant reminder of that achievement. And, and it's nice. It's really, yeah. really nice to just look at it and be, and, and be proud of that accomplishment. And to know now that I have, you know, I'm, I'm currently working on a second book, you know, because it's, it's now the, you, you, you've, you've, you already did it and you know what to expect. So yeah. now it's, now it's just a matter of really, you know, following through and, and making sure that, you know, you do your best. But that's all we can do, right, guys? That's that, the whole point of this, I think, that in any endeavor, especially when it comes to books or writing, it's that just do your best, you know, because at, at the end of the day, Carolyn's going to be there to guide you. She's going to be, you know, she's a, she's a soundboard. You have an editor that's there that's actually going to, you know, work with you uh, on, on the journey. And, and at that point, you know, you just let it reveal itself and when you and when you when you get the reveal and when you get that experience it's incredible well said well uh, that's a really great segue into any questions does anyone have anything uh they want to ask michael anything at all his journey uh questions about where you're at and you know getting his perspective on kind of where you're at in your journey and how you know how he might uh, have any words of encouragement for you um i'll just open up the floor to anybody who wants to um ask a question hazit hazit welcome hazit hey guys hey michael hi <laughs> How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. So good to see you, Pazit. So good to see you too. So um, I wanted to ask you, I know I missed a bit. I hope it's not going to be redundant. Um, how do you deal with fear? I know that your first book was about, you know, uh, don't let fear paralyze you. It's so funny. You gave me that uh, square card when I met you at, uh, yes. um, yeah, in Toronto. And I swear, like that card keeps popping every time I have a fear. <laughs> that card, like, you know, don't let fear paralyze you. So I was wondering, how do you deal with it now? Like uh, when fear comes. So literally my, my biggest thing now is that, um, and I talk about it a little bit in the book, is that I use fear uh, when it, whenever I have that feeling, whenever I feel a moment of anxiety or knowing that there's something that I have to face. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person, guys. So I, I, I meditate. I get to a place where I need to, I, it's, it's cultivating the peace, peace within, right? Every time now, I mean, when we, when, we, when we decide to really take on these challenges, you know, um, Pazit knows, Carolyn knows, we, we, the most important thing to do is to study you, right? And so when you know yourself better, you know how to deal with whatever's coming your way. So for me, the biggest thing I have to say is that I literally, I meditate, I chant. And through that, I actually kind of, I get the answers that I need, I deal with it, and I move forward. Right. But it's, it's now it's a tool that I've developed in order to get through it. So everybody, everybody's going to have their thing. Right. Like, and that's the thing what uh, Carol and I were talking about earlier on is that I don't want to talk at you and say, you know, well, Pazit, you know, in order for you to actually get through the fear, you got to do what I do. That's not the case. It's really about it's taking the time to go. But what makes sense to Pazit so that when it does come up, I know how to deal with it head on. Right. No, I love it. I think like for me, like I use it uh, more like life is, uh, I'm starting to change the whole perspective on fear. And I just see like we're on a journey and life is just an adventure, you know, it's just an adventure. And, exactly. uh, you know, and, and I love it. I love it when you talk about it, because when I watch you, because it's amazing to see. Here's the thing, guys, what's so beautiful is that, you know, I met Pazit at the same time. We went to a conference and uh, with Bob Proctor and we we um, I had written the book. I had written the book and Pazit was kind of. Pazit was already in her business doing her thing, but there was all like, now the, the Pazit that I know today, I mean, it's like, in a, it's, she is, it's night and day. So, so what's amazing is, is that when we take on the idea of not letting the environment dictate our happiness, 
that's what's that's what's really cool because that's what Carolyn Pazit, people that I that are currently on this call who are actually doing incredible things, and that when we can talk about fear is because that's ex I, I no longer allow people to tell me how I should be happy, right? And when I do that, mm. your whole life changes. So so the fear the fear the invitation of fear is no longer the same. It's it's there, but I can I can. You know, I thank it now in a very good way. I love that. Well, and it's an indicator that you're on the right track because if you're not afraid of something that's, you know, that if you set a goal, okay, and it's a crazy, scary goal, okay, the more you're afraid and excited, the better the goal because you're, you have to grow. That's why we're here. We're here to grow. So if you, if it doesn't scare you and it doesn't excite you, it's not a big enough goal. So when, when that fear comes, yeah, you got to thank it and say, okay, like I know I'm on the right track. It's, I'm it's going a, in the right direction. Right. Michael, I have one more question for you. What, what made you write, um, don't let fear paralyze you? Like, how did it come about? Was it an idea that you had? Was it something that you went through? What made you decide that this is your first book, Don't Let Fear Paralyze You? How did it come to you? It was, it was yeah, it was, it was, it was my own, um, my own, uh, the, the warrior that I am, right? I, I, I decided that how can I, how can I overcome these the, the the things that have that have stopped me constantly how can i remind not, not only just remind myself but it was a um it was it was the time where it was i made a decision that it's enough mm. it, 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 like that it's enough and i'm going to document this in a way to prove it to myself first and to others okay. right and and that was and that dedication to myself, and that, again, that's the work that I've been doing. The work that, what, what I've been cultivating with myself was, how do I almost make this letter, with, you know, it's, it's the, in the book form, how can I make it so that it actually always reminds me that it's like, you are on the right mission. This is the right path for you, Michael. And as we said, if it affects other people, phenomenal, right? I welcome the discussion and that we can actually have a, a, a group of leaders really wanting to make, make those shifts that are necessary in our lives, right? But when we, when we step away from it, I'm, I was a pro, a pro at avoiding everything that freaked me out, right? I was, I was, a, you know, I was, in the I was in the world of stage and I was doing stuff and it was like, I, I kind of got used to being on, like being, used to that fear, you know, it's like you get used to your own, your world, right? So you, you kind of, you work through that. But anything else that came with family, when it came to friends, when it came to like confrontation in ways, I wanted to just be a really good boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, wanted to be good. I, I just wanted to like, I wanted to make sure that I didn't really piss people off and that I was always just kind of like doing my thing. And then, and so when I understood that my voice matters too, that, that, that whole, that, that just shifted my thinking. And I was like, no, I, I deserve this. I deserve to be a part of, uh, of the world of authors. Yeah. Thank and you. No, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm so happy yeah. that you wrote it and that right. you birthed it into the world. You know, I, I didn't know that it was a documentary about like, just for you uh, that ended up uh, inspiring so many of us. So thank you for that. Thank you for putting it out in the world. You're awesome, Pazee. Thank you so much for being you. <laughs> so anybody, uh, do we have any more questions? Anybody have any comments, anything they want to? Okay, uh, Kim, then Wanda. I'm going to, so you're thank on you, Kim. Kim, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn and Michael. Um, it's really interesting. I've lived my life. I'm 60 today. Never had fear. So. Wow. Congratulations, Kim. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you an, you're an anomaly. <laughs> Good work. I, I really had an exciting, successful, in-business life. I didn't realize I was an artist till I was 36 years old. Okay? 
uh, had my only child at 41. And what I've tried to live is a life of no judgment. Mm. And it's interesting because what's, you talk about fear, and I'm going to read your book, I look forward to it. But it was like in my face, judgment all the time. And it's that projection. It's the people you love the most. So when you said, I no longer allow people to tell me, and that's like, I no longer allow tell people to tell me you can't be vegetarian. That's enough. I no longer allow people to, what are you up to now? Yes, you're not feeling well. You're going to, what do you bet? Oh yeah, that's, your, that's that meditation psychic person. So it's the judgment of my life. And I came up with that stop stopping me. So I'm yelling inside, stop stopping me. So when you, you say, I thank you, because what you said was, I no longer allow people to tell me. Carolyn, you've been working hard with me, but I no longer allow people, because in the past, excuse my language, I didn't give a shit. Like, I was busy. I didn't gossip. I had no time. I, I was like one of the guys. I didn't give a crap. I was busy. I'm in real estate. I'm working with men. They're judgmental. I've got to wear a tie. I'm going in a suit. I'm like four foot 11 in a business meeting with six six foot men in British Columbia, you know, working with $15 million deals, I'm not stressed. So how can the person I love the most, the people I respect and love the most in life, be stopping me? So I hope I get those answers in your book. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. And I think it's, I think as well, Kim, it's that idea that people are, sometimes they don't know better, right? I think that when you, um, when you don't study yourself or when you don't know yourself well enough, you do allow people to come in and to interject their, their own fears into yeah. you. And so, and so, and so maybe, you know, maybe you have always felt like I, I'm okay. I, I can do this. I'm, I'm a woman that's confident. I can handle it. But yet, yet somebody comes in and says, but Kim, you know, open up door number two as opposed to door number one. And then you're kind of, we, we all innocently become swayed. Right? We, and I, and yeah. don't tell me, like when I was in real estate and like I'm taking 3% of a building and I want top of the building the signage, the guys would say to me, you're never going to get that, Kim, because I was with Roger Staubach, a VP, like you're never going to get that. No, please don't tell me what I'm not going to get. Too much information. I love right. ignorance is bliss. I love my place. I love my, that I don't know the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, loved yeah. it. And yeah. now I know the difference and it's stopping me. I prefer not to know. <laughs> it's. Well, well and, and, and that's what I was saying earlier on, is that I think that what's interesting is that now you're exercising a new part of your life. I think in the actual, in our evolution of self, when we actually now, because you were familiar with that, right? And that's mm -hmm. cool. That's cool. You knew exactly how to handle that. And you knew mm -hmm. how to navigate with those six foot men and like tell them, <laughs> you know, I'm Kim. I might be, you know, at this size, but believe me, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a firecracker and I, I know how to deal with it. That's a beautiful thing. But... Now that you're, you know, you're at, at this stage of the game of your life and you're looking at these new avenues to express, right? New things are going to come up. And so, and, that, and, and that's what I'm talking about is that it doesn't stop, right? Because we continuously evolve as human beings. And so we're going to be at this new stage and going, well, how do, I don't even know how to deal with this because this is brand new. And so now my body's reacting to it completely different. And, you know, and so what do I do? So that's why the cultivation of self. That's why the book is interactive because it is about thinking about where you are in your life and thinking, how do I now face it? How do I, how do I deal with it so that I don't, so that I don't stop because it is beautiful. When we evolve, like we, or when people say life is beautiful, it really is because you really get it because you expanded. There's no limits. As soon as you start getting shut down and you don't want to hear anything or anybody says, that's when it becomes really distorted. Well, that's like, that's like swimming upstream, right? I mean, it's like we want to be in a state of allowing. We want to be in a state of flow. And when we're, because you know when you're uncomfortable and we can get so comfortable in our discomfort yes. that it just becomes like second nature. And then one day you do kind of wake up and you go, wait a minute, this is not making me happy. Mm. There's no joy here. And then you have to go within because it's not the outside it's not the outside circumstances that dictate what happens in your life it's the other way around you've got to be you've got to know you and you've got to do the inside work 
for all of the great things to show up on the outside. So if you're constantly being led by fear, what's going to keep showing up in your path? Things that you are to be afraid of or things that are not going to make you feel like um, you have a life that's going in the direction that you want. Mm -hmm. So I mean, Kim, Kim's in a great spot right now. She's really made some very big decisions. <laughs> Really, I gave myself a birthday gift. <laughs> I invest great, great gifts you've given yourself. I mean, she's just uh, she she's decided that enough is enough. Amazing, yeah. amazing, Kim. And the business side of me, the artist in me, um, my husband's an amazing uh, musician, and my son, and I've written four songs, and I've sort of said, like. At my son's baptism, we sang some of the songs and my family would be like, you're not going to sing in front of all these people. You've got the director of Ayate and you have, yeah, they're all my friends. Like, these are my friends. Yeah, but they're very important. Yeah, and I, and you know what? I was petrified and I got up and sang my songs and my husband's songs. So if I could do that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Don't let fear paralyze you, Kim. <laughs> well, well, that and to, and to actually, you know, to to let the experience flow through you, right? Because yeah. that that's also really cool when you can actually express to people and and just let it be, you know, like it, it, there, there's it, in in even just as from an artistic standpoint, when you allow it to flow through you, and and you just let the story, whatever you're saying, um, affect, you know, the audience because you're, you're again, you're in your authentic self. That's the most, that's the the best place to be when telling a story. The best Thank place, you, you know. You. Thank you. It really Thank you. is because it, it is a because when we come in with the idea of what are people going to think about Kim and uh, is my voice is it going to be okay and of course it's normal to like actually because you care right again if when all of those feelings is just a reminder of like I actually care about what I'm doing but if you can if you come back to the thing of what I was saying earlier on about intention if your intentions are really great then that's when I think some of the best artists do the best work. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Great, great. Okay, Wanda. Wanda had a question too. Go ahead. I love mm -hmm. it. I'm, on, I, I'm in control of the panel. <laughs> Type I, A. I, 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 love I, love, I love that you're in control right now. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank uh, Carolyn for all of this and, and Michael, you know, what a pleasure. I actually love your name. When you said you were spiritual, so am I myself. And um, I think that's how I got through where I am today. Hmm. I'm so grateful that you wrote this book because I think many, many souls out there do need this. Because hmm. including myself, we do need to face this fear and to recognize where this fear comes from. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, I've faced fear so many years and I have buried it and ran away from it and uh, I, the sad thing is that, um, well, it's not really sad. It, it, it's just that I wasted so many years on staying away from what I'm scared of. So when you were mentioning about six, like, you know, the fear, like I'm so petrified of success. Uh, so many things are coming at me. I, I just like, oh my God, this cannot be happening. Um, There's, that's a very good, that's the, what you just said there. Did you hear I, that? No, I'm petrified. Like I'm shaking right now just talking to all of you guys because I see success in all of you. Every one of you, including you, Carolyn. But when I look at my own self, I'm like, oh my God, this can't be happening. Oh my God. Like, oh my, like, like I just, like, you know, a lot of the, the things that have been happening in the last three months, I, I'm just mind bottled. Like I did a joke, like I did something to get out of my board. And this vision board started with my book signing. Then from the book signing, it went from something else and then to something else to something else. But everything is falling into line and that's, pet I'm petrified. I don't even want to leave my house. <laughs> I have one chapter left and this fear of finishing this chapter, I can't even open my computer. And that's why I'm so grateful, Carolyn, that you put me on this call tonight. I'm so grateful that I met you, Michael, and to all of you, I'm like, it's just so emotional because I know that I have to finish it because it's waiting. Remember I told you about that woman, I was in Super C and this total stranger comes up to me as I'm picking apples. She goes, you gotta get that book out. It has to be before spring or in spring, she said around spring. And she said, it's going to hit 
to the stores and it's going to be successful. When she told me that, I went home and I went for a nap. Four hours. I said, I can't. And I put the covers over my head. I said, this can't be happening. Oh, my God. I don't even know this woman. I was telling Carolyn. I was reaching out to her. And then you remember my girlfriend from Hollywood? She's an, uh, uh, what's it called? The uh, transcript. She works with Holly Berry and the whole bunch. I had no idea. I've known this woman for five years. Wow. My kids hung out. We never talked about our careers. I didn't think it was important i just said i just wanted to chill and have fun and just get away from the chaos and so did she not knowing she's on set nine months a year in on universal studios or dreamworks and i'm like you gotta be kidding so she calls me and she says you want to go for brunch i'm like sure we're chit-chatting she goes so how's that book and i'm like oh it's doing okay she goes you didn't finish it yet you got to get that book out and then she goes you know you never know you know aaron brockovich got a movie maybe you can have a book i will shut up <laughs> <laughs> went back home went for another nap for four hours <laughs> so here's so here's what's important okay so this just... book i gotta be honest like I, it, it couldn't have hit me it's like all divine connection each and every one of you is divine connection so I just want to point something out because I want you to remember it. And this is recorded, so you'll remember it. Um, we tend to think of fear because we all know it. And we all we all feel it. But we tend to think of it, okay, well, I'm really afraid of failing. But we can be just as afraid of succeeding. It's succeeding. For me, because everything Wanda wants, Wanda gets. I, I can tell you my whole resume, everything I've ever wanted in my life. This scares me because it's happening. Yeah. It's really, and I'm like, oh my God, what if I, what if I can't handle the success? What if I don't, I don't know. What if I just can't handle well, it? Well, I, 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 I think that I, we. Do you get what I'm trying to say? No, yeah, it's very, yeah. it's, you know, it's very, it's very clear one. And I think it's the, the reality is, is that because we, we project and we create this imagery in our mind as, you know, it just explodes and people love it so much. Can I actually hold the responsibility? Can I actually can, can I can I actually support the people in the room with where I am in my life, right? Yeah. And so I think that I think it's really important to to like with, with your own self reflection to remind yourself that you're enough. If you were able to create the book, if you were able to actually go through the steps to get to that space in your life, whatever it is that we're doing right? A book is a huge achievement to many people. And we know what it is because it takes a long time. But when we get to that stage, when it's actually complete, give yourself the permission to be loved. Amen. Right? Just give yourself the permission to be loved and to receive the love that's coming your way, because that is for you. It's for you. And, 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 and it's really not about, it's, it's, it's not for it's we're all in our like again we're all in our journey and so in that journey we actually are the you know we create we write our own life script right and so in that life script if you have decided that i want to be an author and you choose to be an author then accept that you're an author it's right so, it's so amazing that you said this because i mentioned on the last uh live last wednesday or maybe prior maybe sunday uh, when I was a little girl, my grandfather um, videotaped as I was acting when I was a little girl with my, my other cousin. And mm. he, always, he saw something in me, Grandpa Peel. He said, he goes, I see something in this little girl. Mm. And I buried it for, oh my God, 30 something years. I just ignored it. And um, I found the, the DVD. It was on a beta machine. My cousin in, in Kingston transferred it onto a CD and I'm literally portraying my like my life doing my little skit and I was like seven or eight years old so mm. I guess like we all know what we were supposed to do in our life just that sometimes we lose track or fear and then once we face it like you mentioned earlier it just goes one to over another and, and, well, and one and congratulations because I think that it is we all kind of we all bury it and, I did. I did. Right? And, and because life just life happens, right? And so life happens and it's like, oh, well, I don't have time to actually revisit these dreams or these goals because I have all these other responsibilities of life. But, but, but when you but when you put yourself first, and when you actually when you actually remind and yourself that 
I, again, I, you deserve to be a part of success. If you believe that you're, you deserve it, then you, then you will receive it. But if you, yeah. don't think, right? if you don't think that you deserve success, then it will always be elusive. Elusive. It'll always be. It'll be. It'll always be. You know this. This, this thought. And yeah. yeah. Very well said. I'm going to work on that because you know what? My whole life, uh, since I was a little girl, I was always like bullied and harassed. Whether it's from high school, well, elementary, high school, into my workforce. And I, you know what? When you said you took time for yourself, I took a two-year break from my job mm. to reflect on me. Mm -hmm. and, and then Carolyn shows up, and then one thing shows up another shows up so yes i'm in the process through therapy to love me i'm number one i'm worth it i'm i'm here for a purpose i'm here to tell my story i'm gonna go and finish that book yeah, no, so, so, well, i look forward to hearing about it oh uh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> we're, okay, we're, we're gonna make it happen so you know what the biggest yeah. an, the, the best anecdote the best remedy mm. for for fear is always action, oh, okay. right? You gotta, you gotta feel the fear and do it anyway. You know that expression? Okay. Yes. You have to take the action because you can get paralyzed by that feeling of whatever happened back then, like that was then, this is now. And there is a part of you where however that fear shows up in whatever mask it's wearing, because sometimes we don't call it fear, we call it all sorts of other names. But at the end of the day, it's always, fear masked as whatever we've called it. But the only way to get past it is to go through it. So that means that you have to make a decision. It's always about that, that you're just going to do what you have to do to get to the goal. That's it. You really have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm just going to move through this no matter what, because that's the goalpost. That's where I'm going. Don't look in the rearview mirror. You're not going that way. Right? That's great. That's fantastic. Wanda, I'm just going to open up and see if I have any other questions because I'm going to wrap up in about uh, five minutes. So thank you. Thank you. It's fantastic. Please ask away. Anybody else? Valerie? Hello, Valerie. Thank you for unmuting me. So I don't have so much a question as just, I, I would just like to share some thoughts if nobody minds. First of all, I have been gagging all day for this webinar and wow. you know that because, you know, as soon as I saw that it was Michael who was going to be featured, it was like, oh damn, I'm in because I was honored enough to be part of your one year or two year anniversary call. I don't know if you remember that. That was That's, our one year get together with Bob Proctor call. Yeah, and I got to see him on the call and it was, it was like, it was epic. And I'm really happy that Pazit is here because, and I just, I've just been having woo moments through the whole hour. It could be the Pinot Noir, I don't know. <laughs> but, most, but mostly I think it's everybody here. But I just realized that my journey, like my introduction to where I am sitting right now happened eight months ago because of Carolyn and Pazit bringing Doug to Hotel Ruby Foos. And you were there, Wanda, and you were talking about getting your fucking Oscar eight months ago. So here's the thing, and if I may, fuck the computer, just get a pen and paper and write out your last chapter. And if you want me to come and hang with you while you're writing it out, I will come and hang with you because I have to update my book. And my stuck point with my book has just been released tonight because I figured out that I actually have to write two books. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That is the way to do it. It's the real one is the one is my story, which has to be published anonymously because my ass would get sued if it ever actually came out. But my anonymous book, so are you okay, Wanda? <laughs> cool beans. Okay, cool beans. So, and my first book actually creates a market for my second book, which is the one that you and I are actually working on, which is Attracted to Crazy. Right. And like most of the people here, there are a couple of people who I don't know, but Jenny, I'm getting to know a little bit. Um, Kim is my new favorite person. 
right now. Um, Charlene, my Facebook feed is Precious Pinata. Like I can't get like every time I open up Facebook, I've got this fucking pinata in my face, and it's <laughs> like it's great. But it's but it's great. Like it it's, is it's so great. great. It is great. And <laughs> and I'm looking at the beautiful space that Chris created behind himself. And like everything is just so awesome right now. And I spoke to Doug earlier about how I can um, how I can coach somebody through thinking and through results. Like, should I come to Toronto and have Bob christen me in his indoor pool? Because I figure that he has an indoor pool and he hasn't gotten back to me yet. <laughs> but I'm working on that. Hey, Thanks. didn't you launch and your coaching business today? Also, Carolyn. And it's so funny because Carolyn and I are used to seeing each other at like six o'clock in the morning. Every you day. So beautiful right now. Like you're just, anyway. Thank you, darling. Right? <laughs> I've got, you know, six o'clock. My hair is like everywhere and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> glasses are on. <laughs> As it should be. Kim just joined our 6 a.m. club, so she knows. Oh, just, yeah. Great. Come as you are with your blankie and your coffee. And, and so it, it's, it's, funny to, it's funny to see you at like 9 o'clock at night and you look like a real person. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm just going to stay sitting in this chair all night so that when I <laughs> log in, it's actually the same thing because it's like, oh, it actually looks kind of good right now. Like, <laughs> should, I get up, should I get up earlier now and like do my hair before the call? No. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, listen, didn't you just, didn't you launch your coaching business today? I think I did. That's did. why. That's why I had to ask Doug. It's like, okay, so now what? Like, do, do I get baptized by Bob, or like, can I teach this shit, or what? You know, <laughs> like I'm gonna do it anyway. But it's like, do I do it as a Proctor Gallagher inspired coach, or as a real deal kind of coach, or Listen, do I? You know what? You're gonna get some feedback very soon about that, I'm sure. But I have, I have my my suspicions of what direction you're gonna go because you're in it. <laughs> You're in it. You're living and it. I just, and like last night, so, and the difference between, and here's the whole fear thing. And like what you said, the only, the antidote to fear is just action. It's like, I have been freaking out over the last five days. My energy has been shit, but I also knew that it wasn't real. Like mm -hmm. it's fine. It's going to pass because you know, 23 years of yoga and all that crap. Right. Exactly. Love rhythm. rhythm. Yeah. Right. So, you know, and, and I finally got back to my mat, which was critical. So last night I went to yoga and it was great. And I came home and it was eight 30 and it's like, I'm going to bed. Like I'm done for today. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of shit. It's kind of good, but I'm just going to bed because tomorrow's another day. And then, and, and then, you know, today ended up being Michael day. And I got paid 180 bucks for five minutes of work. And it was like, awesome. <laughs> Isn't that great? I, I, you know what? I really, I, uh, I'm hoping that tonight it really, one of the things that I want when speaking to people is that I, I just hope that whatever it is um, that you're doing in your life, just ask yourself the question, what is the one thing that you'd like to overcome right now? If you can write that down, and just the, the one thing that you'd like to overcome right now and really decide to win in your life, mm -hmm. really, really take that opportunity, right? And, and so that's my challenge to you. And I hope that, you know, of course, as the author, I hope that you guys pick up the book so that you start the journey, right? Because that's really what it comes down to. It comes down to, are you willing to take this, like, this next step and break through? Right. And I, I just want to hear. And if you do break through, please connect with me because I want to hear about what it's like, because it's been it's been awesome. I don't you know what? Actually, I thought there was going to be an because uh, he didn't see. But anyway, somebody I, I thought a friend of mine was I was here to talk about the experience of the book. But, you know, Carolyn, you know, the book well enough to know. And, and it's uh, just yeah. it, it kicks you in the butt. So just uh, if you're ready to win, do it. And, and you know what? That's important. That's an important point. You know, we we do. You know, not that we, we want to practice self-care and we want to love ourselves enough, but sometimes we do have to we do have to 
kick ourselves in the butt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's when you get to that, you know, or, or you, you, you know, get a book like Michael's and you allow him to kick you in the butt. But whatever the experience is, you got to get really honest with yourself. You really do. I mean, when you succeed, anybody who succeeds at anything at some point had to make a decision about becoming successful. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. we can all talk about stuff till till the end of time. And it sounds great on paper. I'm gonna, I will one day, I hope, maybe. But if you really, really want something and you feel that in your gut, then you really have no choice but to go through whatever challenge is going to be placed because every challenge that's placed in front of you is there for you to learn and grow because when you write a book it's more to do with becoming the author mm -hmm. who's writing that book less to do with i mean obviously the content of the book is important but you have to become the person who's worthy of the goal so what does that mean to you? Well, does it mean that you're going to be writing your last chapter for a month or two or five? No, it means that you're going to get together with Valerie. She's going to pour Pinot Noir and you're going to get the last chapter done. That's it. Absolutely. Just do it. I'm writing, I'm writing my book by hand. Write your book. Just write, just write it. And when you write it, it's from your heart and it's going to come out right. Yeah. Writing from the, I, I'm still, I still write by hand. It's, yeah. there, there's, there's scientific, I mean, there's a science behind that connection from your mind to the paper and, and that, and what that does for, you know, it, it's the honesty of doing that. Yeah. But just do it that way and write it out and get it done. Listen, uh, I had Jeannie Souders on here a couple of weeks ago. She wrote a novel uh, uh, called Soul Thieves. And I remember one of her biggest challenges was finishing her book. Because yeah. she was so attached with the writing of it that when she finished it, she actually had to mourn the process of letting go of it. Right. Because it's a piece of you. Yeah. So when we're writing our story, we get a little attached to it. So it's like, you know, when you're re reading a really good book and you hate to read the last chapter because it's then it's over. Right. Yeah. So we tend to not let go. And we do that by not writing the end of the book. I can guarantee you that writing the end of your book is not the end of your story. It's the beginning of your story. So yeah, get exactly. the end written. You have to you have to finish the book so that you can go get your Oscar. That's how it works. Kinda. Kinda. Right? So it. what is Wanda's block? What is your block right now, Wanda? Just has to do it. Is it this um, exactly what exactly what Michael said? It's the it's the unknown of these are my darkest deepest oh my god secrets okay <sighs> but it's so healing yeah it's out there it's oh my god like am i gonna be I, I i'm not even sure if i have fear on what people are gonna judge me or nothing like that it's the fear of it's like coming out of the closet yeah mm -hmm. uh -huh. it's like ellen coming out of the closet it's that fear of being oh my god now the world's gonna know Oh my god. It's, I, the, I have, it's the fear of being seen, Wanda, right? Yeah, think, exactly. That is it. Oh, oh my yes. god. Like it's been since I was a little girl. It's been one thing after another. And and I'm I mean, I you know when I think about it, I, I like um, if I was gonna take my life, I didn't foresee all this. And I've got four beautiful kids and have an amazing life, but I just didn't see any work until mm. Carolyn came along and it was like look, it was thanks to my daughter. And if it wasn't for my daughter, I I wrote that letter. I had the house clean. It was it was game over because I thought I could do so much more being on the other side than being here. And physique knows me. Um, God, I love physique, and she uh, is awesome. Wanda, you are so worthy. Oh yes, I am worthy. You're so worthy. I've come so I've come so far, but again, like all of this is lining up of fear and and wanting to end the story of my my life of saying that 
I can do this and share each and every step so that someone else that is going through it in silence right now, if I can just pull them out of the water the way I was pulled out. And, um, and I think, like as I said, writing the last chapter is the darkest. And it's, 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 I'm facing that here as I'm writing. And uh, it, it, it's been... Uh, okay, so let's set the goal right now, Wanda. Well, my goal... My, I, I picked, I did pick a date. I did. I said the 12th because I wanted to see you and hand that literally over. My daughters, 12th. my daughters, um, see what's happening in my life, guys. Um, I think Carolyn is the only one and my therapist that knows about what's happening in my whole life. So she's my little like crack in the, <laughs> like my nose. <laughs> my children want to read my book before. I have a 17 and 18 year old and a 13 and 14. But my two older daughters wants to read it. So that I'm having a lot of anxiety of like, oh my God, oh my God, I got, I got to sit down with the whole family now and discuss this. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more than just putting this book out for the world to read. It's also my family. And so it's like baby steps. So there's a lot of fear. I think I better get that book. <laughs> and also Charlene's book for helping me with that little puppet there. I think I, I, think I need all of your books. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, they yeah. really good books. Yes, I, I'm, well, they're all great artists. They're they're authors really here, good. authors here. And uh, so, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So, and the book will fun. help you get wherever you want to get, like, really fast. Well, I'm on the right path, according <laughs> to what that woman said at Super C. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's that. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Okay. Promise. I love you. <laughs> Do we have anybody else in the house that wants to share or ask a question? I know I have some things in the chat which is really, really fantastic back and forth. Um, read your chat because there's lots of encouragement for everybody in here. And you're welcome. And you're welcome. <laughs> and I love it. Love it. Love it. You guys are phenomenal. So, so good. Hi, Chris. Um, Hello. Chris, did you have, so Chris, you have a question? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you find time to write? Well, I, um, I think that the biggest thing, Chris, for me was I, 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 when you want to make it happen, you find the time, right? And I think that when I decided to, with everything that was going on, I got my ass up really early and uh, worked in solitude and before the noise started to happen, right? So I think, I think it's really, and, and to really be, I think even in the journey, be, be nice, be, be, be delicate with it all and not like have these high expectations yeah. of wanting to like write a whole chapter or, or write 10 pages, right? If you only, if you have 30 minutes in the morning to write half a page, that's phenomenal right? Because you're still getting to the end goal. So I think it's just, it's the increments that, that really, that I found really helped me because, um, yeah, I mean, everybody has writer's block. And so there's moments when nothing's happening, but even if you get it out there and if you just, and, and, you, and you commit, because that's the thing that, you know, commitment is just, it's key with this. If you, if you, if you deserve this book, then you're going to commit to this book, whether it feels like hell or not. Hmm. it's because sometimes it's going to feel like hell right like it's it's wonderful to go hey hurrah and that it's wonderful when the box comes and you get to open it up but before you open up that box the journey can be a pain can be tough can be joyful can be sad all you know we, we experience everything so um make the time make the time so you, you wrote it over almost a year right is what you wrote your book I mean, I would, well, I'd say that it, the, the, the birth of it to when it, when, until when I met Carol, Carolyn was like a year and a half. And yeah. then when, I, when, I, when Carolyn and I met then, so like a two year and a bit process to actually get it done. Did you take like big chunks of time to work on it or like just a little bit here and there? Or how, how did you schedule yourself to make it work? Yeah, I, 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 um, I uh, in my sporadic schedule, I mean, I could get really strict with myself. You know what I mean? And so there's moments when I just set my butt down. And I'm like, you're doing it right now. Like, it doesn't matter what's going on. Specifically, like in the world that we live in with all the noise and all the social media, like I can get distracted so easily. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but but when it was time to like I like getting things done, right? I'm like this is the goal, and especially when I start sharing that information with people, knowing they know that I'm writing the book, I'm like I gotta get this done, right? Yeah. <laughs> They'll be like Challenger, so what's happening with your book? And I'm like I don't want to keep talking about it, right? So so I I uh, I make it a point, but it but it's it is a but you know there were moments that it was just daunting, and I was like I don't feel like doing this right now, but I have to, you know. And I think that's where you become, I mean, uh, Chris is a student of uh, TIR, so he knows what, and, and, and think of it, Chris, yeah. when we decided October 1st to get on a call at 6 a.m. every single day, and we've done that every single day since October 1st, we made the time yeah. because we wanted to do it. It's the very same thing. When you prioritize the book, and one of the best ways to prioritize your book is to take your eyes off of yourself and and the struggle if you will because the struggle is real but the struggle of writing it and then shift the focus on to the completed uh manuscript the book and how people are going to uh read your book and love it like get emotionally attached to the outcome of it being done that's mm -hmm. what will you know that's what will move you closer to the goal and have the goal cl move closer to you because if we focus on, oh, it's hard and we don't have enough time and I've got to find enough time, but you think about, oh my gosh, like it's going to be so great when, when X, Y, Z person reads the book or if I'm at my, my book signing and people are coming up and they're loving the book, like get attached to that part mm -hmm. and feel what that feels like in the, in, like in the present tense. Yep. And that's what will get you into the writing groove. That's what will inspire you. So you're not motivated anymore. You're inspired. And, and, and Chris, it's kind of like what I was saying in the beginning too, is that, you know, what is your intention behind the book, right? I think yeah. when, like the, the pure the intention, then the actual easier the writing process becomes because you know why you're actually getting up in the morning. That's the excitement. It's, it's that I have something to say versus what should I say, right? Mm -hmm. it, so what I think when we shift our perspective in that with the writing, then all of a sudden it becomes a need. It becomes like I have to release Right. Yeah. So, awesome. um, oh, that's awesome. Is that you. anything else, Chris? No, that's very helpful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So I just wanted to make a quick note. We have uh, Deirdre uh, down on the bottom right. Now, Deirdre is in her pre-sale campaign right now. Her book launches on the 28th of February. Yes, congratulations. So, so big, big uh, shout out to Deirdre who uh, has written her first novel and it's really good and she's excited and she's in that space of having seen the book come as her proof for the first time and um and so um put your uh in the chat Deirdre why don't you put your um website there and people can go check out your book and see your pre-sale campaign and what it kind of feels like to be in the throes of the few weeks before your official international book launch and what that looks like and what that feels like so yeah so let's put let's put your website in there and everybody can take that uh and go well, and check it out that's an interesting question with charlene just she, she had a question of what is the best way to increase traffic at a book signing um, well, you know, there is some, there's marketing all around the book signings and I know that, you know, um, Charlene's been doing them and she's had her mascot and her precious uh, and her gang and whatnot. And you're doing all the right things because you're, you're cross promoting and you're promoting what you're doing. Um, and I know that, was that at a chapter, Charlene? Hang on, I'm going to unmute you. There we go. Yes, it was at Indigo. In yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they don't do a heck of a lot of promotion. I mean, if you can get, um, if you can get some media, well, you have media attention already as well. It's yeah. tough because you know, you're borrowing the traffic in a bookstore. So you can do some of your self promotion, tell people that you're going to be there and maybe do some radio, right. Or try to get a little bit in your local community. Cause that's really, it's quite local, mm -hmm. but you know, you're a speaker, you're a professional speaker. So, you know, at this stage of the game, it's like, okay, where can I start really uh, finding speaking opportunities? Because the book is the product, but it's the foundation for the business beyond the book. 
So you already know what you're doing. You already have the book and you have the book for the kids and, and, but finding places that are, um, that, that go beyond. So seeking out, picking up phones and finding places to go and speak, set a speaker's fee. Yeah. Right. And you've got your, you've got your precious and your, all of your, uh, all your props that you take with you, but maybe that's the next stage is to really start actively finding speaking engagements because that's where you're going to get a lot more visibility than any book, any book signing. Oh yes. Yes. And I just wanted to thank uh, Carolyn and for the call this evening. It is wonderful to see everyone. Michael, congratulations. Deidre, congratulations. And I just wanted to share that I am uh, stepping through fear and taking the next big step to go a hundred percent into what I love to do. I, <laughs> I've been in policing for 25 years. And uh, when you know, you know, I don't know yeah. how else to explain it. You're yeah. ready and everything lines up the universe. You just keep putting that intention. You know, we took the Bob Proctor course and then also did the, uh, the, the live broadcast thinking into results and uh, it was phenomenal and I've been living that life and when your your mind or your energy is put out into the universe everything lines up beautifully and it, when we set aside judgment fear and we connect to spirit we connect to the source and this is where we block out all that negative energy we block out those distraction pinatas you know, mm -hmm. in our way, we don't. And when I see somebody in my head that's literally a distraction, I just say inside of my head, "Distraction pinata, distraction pinata." So you don't let them fizz you or shake you. Oh you, yeah. You just do what your spirit tells you to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and it's and you have to practice it. Yeah. I mean, these are things we learn, and these are strategies that we start to incorporate. But you know, it's like anybody learning anything new it takes time to incorporate into your daily habitual behavior and once you start practice first of all you become aware mm -hmm. and then you start practicing these things and before you know it you can pattern interrupt so your mind goes into that place where it, it has that negative thinking or it has that habitual pattern of thought and you can turn around and call it distraction pinata get out yep exactly i'll tell you what bob proctor says Oh yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm already here. It's a very strong expression for what to do when those voices come into your head. Well, we heard Valerie tonight, so go ahead and tell us. <laughs> you know what? Love you, Valerie. I actually, I actually want to thank thank you, Charlene, so much for your your comments on the uh, on the film. Um, thank you so much for it because she was really it's just been really uh, really beautiful with what you said, and, and and it means a lot as a filmmaker. It's great when you release something and. Uh, people really just did the response to it. So if you guys get a chance, Carolyn put it there, but if you can check out where we go from here. A family movie on YouTube, it's there. It's 18 minutes. I'd love for you guys to check it out and leave a, a comment and just let me, you know, mm -hmm. let us know. Because I'm in development now with it. We're, we're looking at bringing, taking it to the next level and your opinion matters. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and yeah. I love the movie. I was totally, from the time I turned it on, I was just right into it. It was like you're in the movie. Yeah. It was, it was so captivating. It was excellent. Excellent. Is everybody here in the Facebook chat for Web Class Wednesday? I don't know if Natalie is. I think everybody else is. Uh, Gabriella is. Deirdre, are you in the uh, in the Facebook uh, chat for the, for Wednesdays? I think so. Yeah, I get your email. Every, uh, but in Facebook, I'll, I'll check, okay? Because I put I put the link to Michael's film in the uh, in the chat. Okay. It's seventeen minutes and what thirty four seconds, Michael? You know, you close forty eight seconds. Seventeen forty eight. Yes. Exactly. It's, it's, it's exquisite. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful film. It comes from you know Michael's heart, right? Co written, you know, directed, produced by phenomenal film, uh, phenomenal cast just phenomenal film it's great so um all the best with that because we know that's a moving and shaking yeah that's it, it it's also again once again it was it's wonderful that i went through tiff and and that i went through the festival and actually it's funny i 
again, guys, it's amazing when you just release, right? You don't know when you, when you take the, the initiative of just sharing what, what happens, right? And so literally this, today, somebody, um, it's the Hudson, Hudson Film Festival. I'm, I'm with them. Well, there you go. So, so, so Steve, Steve from the, who, who's? Um, Steve Cromar, Clint Ward. Steve, no, Steve Ward. Steve, hold on, hold on. Would I'm be gonna, Clint. Clint Ward. And a Clint Ward. So Clint, Clint just, yeah, Clint actually just wrote to me saying, "I love the film, and we have to, you know, we we need to showcase it at the festival." So, you know, so it's interesting that it's already been released, but that there's still um, a response, right? And people want to still like bring it onto their platform to share with others because you know that Clint is one of my authors too. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Awesome. So I got I got I got to tell Clint and be like, look, we have some, you know, we have something in common. Well, when we moved our offices last week, Clint was the first one with champagne up at the office. Oh wow! Right, because the office is in Hudson. So anyway, we'll talk about that because I've been associated with that film festival since it started. So we'll talk oh, about that another day. But that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Only two degrees of separation now. No, really, really, right? Wow. Okay, guys, well, I hope that you've enjoyed this call. I know it's gone on an extra half an hour, but I did <laughs> not see any point in interrupting anybody because everyone has just such amazing things to share and ask. And Michael, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Honestly, um, I just, I wish you guys all the best with this and then that, it, that you get exactly what you need. You know, just continuously believe that you deserve the success that you seek. So. Thank you so much for joining. Well, thank you. Thanks for sharing your evening. Thanks for sharing your success. You had some uh, just amazing insights and wisdom for everybody who's, you know, you, you travel through the journey. Everyone's journey is different, but I think most of us can, you know, feel that there's a lot there that's similar, right? We all, we all travel a similar journey. Um, and maybe some action items come out of this call. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I that's what I want to see. It, it's just really it'd be wonderful in one of these, you know, future chats to just hear what was it that you did to overcome that 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 one fear, right? Just start just starting with that little one and see where 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 it takes you. So yeah. Well, we'll have to set that up. We'll do a we'll do a, an encore and try to get everyone back on a call. So we'll set some set some intentions. Uh, awesome. Linda Green's uh, on the call down uh, bottom left, and she's in California, and she's writing a book about PTS and first responders and personal experience and taking action all the time and and just just creating an incredible book that's going to serve an awful lot of people. So. There's a lot of people, everyone on this call has something really to be very proud of, and I'm proud of everybody, and I love watching your stories evolve. So thank you for your evening and for investing it here, and uh, I'm very, very grateful, and I'm very happy that everyone here has uh, got a smile on their face, so that makes me happy. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Okay, you. everybody. I'll send you the recording of the call. Thanks very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, love. Bye, everybody.